Good evening. Hi. Well, that was definitely worth watching. That was a really good documentary. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to say that I was impressed with um, how little bias there was. These documentaries about Marxism and, uh, you know, versus capitalism and what socialism is and what communism usually because they're produced in the West, you know, by our English speaking countries, they they either stick to the our, our the limitations of our uh, fairest of narratives, which always, of course, makes us the winners and the ones that are right about what we believe or are almost propagandist and they try to um, you know, malign everything that has to do with uh, communism, the communist revolution and Marx and so forth. But this one was, I would say, on the better spectrum because it, it basically left it at, um, it left it at Marx, it was very educational. I, th I, I recommend it, <laughs> here I go again, not completing my sentences or my ideas. Um, one of the problems that we have right now in this in this whole argument is that everybody uh, in, in, in all in, in all of the American continent, Spanish and English speaking and some of Europe or whatever are um, in the belief that there are two symmetrically opposed competing uh, dogmas or political philosophies. And that's not, and they associate Marx to that as the father of the enemy or something very simplistic and um, which has got us all kind of head to head, not even understanding stuff and fighting and arguing and insulting each other um, and taking sides and joining the team that is to you, to that person, the winner, winning team. And we really don't understand. And this, what it, what, what it's, uh, what the big picture is really about. And this documentary explains it beautifully. And it also, ex which con con concurs with what somebody I listened to sometimes, uh, Richard Wolff. You, sh you should also, uh, he's he's a great educator as well. Uh, teaches that um, Marxism was the uh, Marx and and his. His philosophical um, launch of 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 and of analysis and his whole dissertation and narrative has to do with what could be uh, made analogous to mankind, in this case him, his own mind doing it, finally understanding the structure of of capitalism, which is what actually we have always done, um, retain power and, and concentrate it by a few. But see, Marx doesn't give it that. I, I'm now understanding a little better because I'm not really well read about him at all, but I, uh, I understood this much, what I explained so far, what I said so far and what I, uh, this documentary reiterated is that he basically understood what the problem with the modern systems of capitalism were and he gave it he explained it he gave it a, a structure that then created all the issues and arguments about the the, the injustices and and uh, and how eventually the the unbalances and the instability um and you know it talks the documentary starts on uh, on his human analysis, which is that uh, capitalism is spurs out of uh, spurs out of um, profit, the idea of profit, and so he sees that as the generator of of of, of its instability and the problems, because there will, we will always seek for profit as the uh, driving force, as a motivating engine behind capitalism, it will always be about 
the people that retain the power to create that profit versus the workers that are uh, sort of like uh, assisting. They're like the 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 bees or the the ants that are expendable, and so they don't have power and of decision over the distribution of money. Uh, only the people that have the power for uh, creating and generating and using profit do. And so he says that this is a condition that will never be stable and will fail. And so the, the documentary actually, it's fair enough that it points out that, well, but um, look at humanity as a whole, even though uh, we have all these injustices and problems and stabilities and collapses throughout modern times of the economy and of, of social structure, still we start off at a better level than we did a thousand years ago. You know, people were dying of disease and so, and it's kind of wanting to take the laurels, wanting to take the glory that for whatever good we have been able to be better than we were before, it's thanks to capitalism, which I don't, I don't think it's true, but not because capitalism would be judged differently but because of what they're saying that it's the only thing that we have known and it's i find it really interesting and a little unsettling that some people in the documentary say um what else is there what else you know it's like it's like breathing uh, it's like uh the option is you know what what is what could possibly be the alternative and the the presenter the the lady uh, does make this question a few times, which I think is valuable, you know, the, to ponder the question, what can be the alternative, and will we ever uh, evolve out of it to something that no longer creates problems and instability? And so I'm going to make this short, I promise, this time I really will. Um, what I'm realizing, but basically, um, you know, they talk about the problems in the in the structural mechanisms, uh, uh, political and financial economic mechanisms of capitalism, and um, and all of that is understandable, except that. I can, I can, what I'm seeing is that the world today, and it's very evident in this documentary, that we don't understand why this happens to us. It, we talk about the mechanism, working or not working. Uh, and it seems that we are becoming also less, um, less um, talkative or less, our, our, uh, how can I say this? We talk less about um, the human, about human nature and what it causes us to do. And I think this has happened because we have always assigned our behavior to a moralist discussion to do with uh, law rules and laws and ethics of religion or spirituality or morality uh, and things that we should attain we should try to do and um, and that has been sort of it was neither here nor there so it hasn't gone anywhere and it seems that we're just losing interest and ironically the whole understanding of uh, that would make give what Marx was saying any sense at all is to introduce the missing element of human nature because the documentary itself says Marx, Marx wasn't really giving an option he uh, you know kind of was he was not a terrorist he did, he did not believe in, in destruction he believed that the 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 revolution would come as a as a as a transformation of a thriving capitalist economy he he gave worth and value to the dynamic capacity to produce of capitalism he understood that everything that it was achieving so he believed 
uh, towards the end of his life that it was, um, it would happen, we would someday realize, he he saw it very naturally, he saw that eventually something will give and we will make the leap and invent uh, something to substitute it with, or the next step will come around, an alternative to capitalism. And he pretty much left it at that. So the poor guy is maligned um, by <laughs> people on Facebook, <laughs> you know, uh, kids, you know, people that like to uh, talk like they they think the world is just about these stupid fights that happen on social networks. And, um, and in reality, he just basically understood something that was happening through the, the mechanisms of capitalism to humankind, to civilization. And I believe he would have, we could complete, we can complete his uh, thesis if we introduce the simple notion of because this is how mankind is, this is how the human being is, as a a fixed reference of how uh, to do with how evolution simply made us, how we're wired, how how not in a judgmental or uh, evaluative evaluating sense of like is it right or wrong or no 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 evolution doesn't make mistakes we are what we are because this is how the cosmos and and creation natural cosmic creation evolution life has formed <laughs> uh everything we know everything we know from the planets to every single life form on the planet there is um, an understanding of life and our human bodies and the bodies of animals that is not up, not up, not for up for polemics. It's not debatable. It's it's just simply that we should and ought to every day learn better how we are designed and talk about that as a as a, a reference that will make a lot of what people are talking about because a lot of people discuss and put against each other theorems and 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 make them oppose and compete um just like we're doing with uh socialism or communism or marxism and capitalism or neoliberalism and neoliberalist capitalism in reality there's the element of mankind of humankind of womankind, of the species, how we're wired neurologically, what we will always react like, what we will always tend to do, what we will always um, need and feel that, uh, and or 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 try to get away with, you know, uh, just the way we are. That is omitted in all of these and so many discussions, and so if. You introduce that, and then you talk about what Marx discovered uh, was the way, the faulted way in which capitalism kind of waddles forward and continues to grow and produce and collapse and, and reinvent itself or whatever. And you you introduce the the unmovable element of our design of the human mind's uh, nature, our nature, the, our, we will un then be able to have something to talk about and a way to start conceiving alternatives to capitalism. You will have now something, a, a reference, and, and that reference is basically Gaia. It's humanism, natural humanism, not the political... Um, I mean, not the spiritual humanism, because there's a humanism that was started by, uh, well, I think it wasn't started by Argentinian, but the one that I know is popular here in Italy. He's a big figure anyways. H humanism is known as, or the one at least I'm familiar with, is a kind of spiritual religious uh, belief, philosophy. I see humanism as what I just described, is 
the science that simply looks at this this creature that is the human bo- uh, human being trying to trying to balance this intelligence that's too big for its own nature and keeps flopping all, all over you know hurting itself and misinventing things that will end up hurting and then or it gets carried away with something that is you know whatever but it has this relationship like i made and said in that other in my last video and this is our our existential condition this in perpetual instability this this condition of uh per, of, of forever of consistent uh imbalance and that is what we are that we are a relationship of our capacity and our uh, eventually our nature that will call us to what it really wants or what it makes us happy or you know it will we will end up responding to our our, our true unchanged in unchangeable human nature but we don't talk about it and we what we do is we we uh, discuss and analyze our inventions and criticize them for failing or succeeding and what they do and then there's somebody else and somebody invents something else different to put in its place and we'll compare those two but we never talk about what we end up doing with our inventions and that's what's basically missing to uh in our, in, in our enlightenment of our own selves enlightenment towards our existential condition uh is to present the reference of what we are, we, all of us, in the, in the sense that we're the same, that human being that is equal, and that is the same human being in each one of us, the design of our, of our, our mind and our brain and our, our bodies. And so then you can start all over and you can say, well, profit, you can understand profit because profit is almost like something you know, when you ha- don't have a system, a mechanical system, uh, and you resort just to serving yourself of the planet, you know, picking food, you know, collecting or hunting animals or what have you. Uh, you live for the moment, you live for the day, you build a shelter, and when it starts leaking, you fix it up. And, you know, maybe you fix a little extra that your house. Uh, you put some more mud in case next winter. You may prepare ahead, but there is no profit in our natural existence. There is maybe doing things in advance, but the mechanism of of, of money with ease in which it could uh, liquidate material into a coin and transport value so easily in your hand spark the idea of profit because oh well now i have 10 coins and i don't even know what i'm going to be able to do with that but i have something that is power power towards the future to to choose whatever i want to do with later and so profit appears as a uh an observation of the human being marx doesn't present it that way marx presents it as Profit occurs, and then profit is the culprit. And then, um, or money is a culprit, or, you know, and we we either take it out in our inventions, or we totally look the other way because we don't want to lose that invention. Like, for example, I, I believe that weapons, the actual existence of the invention of the weapon, the gun, is the reason that there is so much killing and war but it's because I am looking at it, uh, you know, I have already for some time been always referencing what the human being will do with such an invention, socially even. Maybe not not just the individual, but what collectively will happen if you introduce an invention to the species, like that the famous movie, The Gods Must, Must Be Crazy, from South Africa, I think it was, where a bottle falls from the sky and they... Um, you know, it affects the tribe and, and they start doing things they never did before. They start fighting. And and so I kind of see it that way. I see the gun as... And, and then people want to argue, because I don't know why, but they want to argue against this. And their argument is that there will always be killers. There will, oh, what do you do if somebody wants to rape your daughter? You know, and, and these justifications to 
to in order to not believe that the gun can be the actual reason we have gotten so so uh, murderous against ourselves we may have we when if you subtracted the gun the invention of the gun and weapons from civilization yeah maybe uh it would occur that somebody grabs a rock and just loses it and wants to kill the other person but the proportion is what gives you a reality of understanding and if that would only happen once in a billion time a billion instances instead of you know a thousand times in a billion instances then that's what we're talking about and so far as there would be or there wouldn't be uh, it's not an absolute um, discussion but in any case so in this under so it is what is it what's important is that we understand today when we're looking at socialism and versus capitalism or whatever uh that socialism or marxism was the awakening of the the collective sense of well-being of recognizing yeah but people are hungry and, and people are uh, unfairly not getting what the others are getting and all of these voices from our natural mind the the mind that doesn't know uh, that where the species lives together in clans and doesn't have slaves or class categories or castes or or uh you know workers and bosses or anything like that it's it's, it's just a tribe living naturally and that's the predominant evolutionary course of our of our form that gave us form and so it is that part of our mind that simply knows what we are and simply knows that something doesn't feel right that is actually being expressed through the analysis of capitalism you know that the, the, the it does not accept that children are made to work in factories for example the capitalists on the other hand weren't thinking like that but it wasn't because they're you can't say the other team that's the way we, it's always been the driving power uh, authority that has the instrument, the latest instrument in their hand. And so what we're looking at actually is a, is a, is a, an argument or a, a fight, if you will, between the collective natural part of our brain, which maybe doesn't, you know, is not so motivated by profit or or um and would even you know we not know the drive that we now think needs to be the norm the drive and the ambition to build and construct and push forward that it seems it is the way we have always designed civilization in some way in different scales you know when uh when it was the slaves and the emperors or or the kings and the and and the, and the, the, the paupers that were the multitude you know it was always about concentrating power and authority if it wasn't profit yet so much as an obvious element like now capitalism makes obvious it was it was some form of uh uh um some form of a dis disproportion, exaggerated uh, holding of power and authority over others, right? And the the appearance of Marxism and socialism is like the paupers or the slaves in during the Greek periods or the Chinese empire or what have you, for the first time saying, wait, I thought you said this is for all of us so it's like the intelligence simultaneously you know capitalism also is saying this way we can produce it's really it's really a good documentary because it's saying there's a, a good side and a human side also to capitalism it says that way we can have make and make we can make medicine and cars for everybody right says the the capitalism the capitalists so they, now there's there, they can relate more to common human issues where before the pauper or the slave would not have 
even been able to say, but wait, I thought you cared for everybody to have access to clean water before they did it. Now, these are things that even the, the concentration, concentrating leading authority of the capitalist, let's call them, do agree that it's one humanity. There are ideas that have become universal. So um, now there's a discussion, now there's an argument, but it's not two teams of symmetrically opposed philosophies or dogmas that are competing. It is one part of humanity, one perspective, a collective natural perspective of our brain, speaking and noticing and criticizing and, and denouncing and, and asking uh, the leader or the capitalist or the king or the or the Roman emperor, uh, look at these things. This should not be happen, happening. And, and today, in this modern era, we can say, you and you agree to that. So it has become a political discussion, where before that political discussion didn't even ex exist. But nonetheless, it still is not about two options. It is about one aspect of humanity's existence and another aspect of humanity's existence or civilization. Um, and this is very important that we, first of all, that we understand that so we can stop fighting. So we can stop, you know, thinking that we got, okay, you're bad because you're socialist and socialism fails. It's not something that's trying to prove is better than capitalism. That's, that's where we went wrong. It was never that. It's always been an, an, an awakening that was being made possible by the modern era. And so it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a, a, trying to tell the leaders, uh, the powerful authorities uh, that are now embodied in capitalism, wait, you know, think, why aren't you thinking about this? Or look at this, look at what, what's happening here. Um, that needs to be understood. Somehow people have to explain it better than I am right now that we got to stop uh, thinking that this is a fight between two political parties. Somebody tell Trump to stop. Stop dividing and making people fight each other because either you're a capitalist or you're a socialist. No. Um, and, and capitalists are also wrong in thinking that they are some kind of uh, proposal of... Uh, no, we invented something. It's called money. And it does something to human nature, this third element that I'm saying we need to introduce in 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 the um in the intellectuality or the the understanding or the reasoning or the logic of all these arguments. We need to ex introduce that third you know pillar or that third reference or that third uh something to, to profile to profile the other two off. You know, which we don't. We have to become comfortable and say, but, you know, human beings will, you will look at somebody else, have everything, a pool, a yacht, and and even though you've got Nikes and you've got your little laptop and what have you, the human being will always say, well, you know, I would like to have a yacht too someday. And there's nothing wrong with that because the way we're naturally wired is to stay together. And so we have an impulse to notice when somebody is either unfairly or horribly being hurt or somebody taking having too much and having too much fun. We also want to have fun. We also don't want the other person to get hurt because we don't want to hurt. So there's a lot of empathetic forces that are keeping the species together. It's not just about wanting to have. It's also about wanting to make sure that others don't have and others succeed, the world we have created is not allowing us to see some because it's making us like, it has put us all in a race. And so we're all looking one way and we're not able to look back and say, wait, I don't want him to lose. I don't want him to get sick. I don't want... And of course, then there's the argument, the, the, the problem that now we look at some social concern ideas and we think it's that bad team the other team the socialist the communist marxism we're supposed to be against and so because we're trapped in this binary confrontation 
we are also not being able to understand this human reference also because as we we don't know it's there it's like we don't we haven't uh introduced it we haven't um uh you know given it a place and so we we're not aware that there's supposed to be a third reference there the human being for everything else to make sense as to why we do the things we do and why the things that happen to us happen when we introduce the third element the our human design and own it and say well and not own it but say well that's just how we are uh everything will start making sense and we'll be able to um um set our feet on the ground for the first time we'll be able to say well this it happens to us because we will always we seek this want this feel that way tend to we don't have that that third voice that th that third concern or person whatever you want to call it and because we don't have it all our explanation of the world all our explanations of the world move over that space and uh you know create other um judgmental or condemning or uh you know explanations for whatever the argument is we it's almost like we're going over that space that's supposed to we're passing we're walking right over that space that's supposed to be filled with uh, the reference of the human being the, the 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 woman the man the the human <laughs> um and when you do that then all of a sudden and and you realize also that socialism or marxism is actually that part of the brain that is starting to in this modern era finally say hey no but you know you also ah, isn't politics and government supposed to benefit and distribute for everybody you know before we wouldn't even dare say that to the emperors or to the king but now we are so there's an argument and in uh, that third element will also help us you know and um the other side uh the other voice is just kind of the, the people that believe uh in 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 the system the mechanism the invention which is all of us it's not just capitalisms are into system or invention or material and and using riding that mechanical horse and 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 and, and you know running off it and leaving everybody behind we also like we also we all do that it's just that we have split the world we all like our inventions we all like our toys inventing toys and finding solutions and creating stuff and and coming up with understanding or discovering science or discovering the world we're all the same this way uh inventing theorems philosophies uh new kind of uh moralities a, a new green morality a new human mora morality it's not the progressives it's not the capitalists that's something that human beings do we we have a very very smart mind but the people who are in the powers of, uh, that be you know and the capitalists the ones that have authority and are wielding the create the making or the growing of profit and and uh, uh materialists are also convinced have have become convinced they don't they don't see the lament as much because they the 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 confrontation has made them convinced that they have to stick to their to their guns in this one of two opposing uh fights and 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 and, and the people in the uh opposing fight uh, uh, you know fight a, a fight of oppositions and the people we call progressive or socialists or what have you um are also not aware that they want to be human and they care about poverty too as a capacity because they're also an equal human being and we identify them as a another political dogma so they're capitalists we can't be anything that is not 
just a human being. You can't be a capitalist. You can't be a homosexual. You can't be, um, you know, a black. You can't be uh, whatever. You can't be anything that is not a human being first. And we need to start all our dis all our arguments and all our comprehensions about what happens to us in this world and what we're living from the human being. That third element that we haven't met yet, we haven't put there to to um, to uh, create the, the to project the original the starting reference from uh, in order to make sense of this world that we've designed and built and created. Um, but all our arguments are starting from things that are, uh, uh, you know, not below in the moral sense, but um, above the importance of the human being. And if we started all our logical, critical analysis of things because any human being would feel left out or excluded and would want to rejoin or would resent being called you're a green or a black or a white then we would understand how the dynamic started of racism and then we later had to explain it and call it this is racism is something that happens to to people to mankind but no it's not true the mind the design the unchangeable human being that is, uh, the, the, as the, the, the human being that we all are equally and will not change, made by evolution and so forth, does not think first, oh, am I black or white? No. In fact, you can see it in babies. You can see that babies notice something. The skin causes, calls their attention. But they know that it's another human being and it's another baby and it's another the same age and they go and they want to be friends and play. And we lose that because we subscribe to our constructions that don't start from human being. The argument of socialism versus capitalism is the same thing. These two opposite things don't exist. We have constructed fights that are really about what our inventions do to us, what our world does to us. And this us is not talked about yet. This us doesn't exist. We don't know how to say, well, you know, it's understandable that this happens to to us because we are this way. We would be affected by this. We would be affected this way by that belief or that impulse or that reaction. As And we will start getting smarter because we'll say us, we would get, we would want that and we would try to achieve that. And we would, speaking of capitalism, let's say, and we would try to procure and, 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 and gain that, or we would try to um, uh, produce more of that and, and, and project for the future. And then, but if we're talking about what was known as socialism or Marxism, we'd say, well, of course they will say that because I would say that too. If I would see my child not accessing health care. So even the way that we understand these two sides that right now are not seeing each other uh, themselves as of different nature, of different reason, but are seeing themselves as two symmetrical um, dog, political dogmas would change also. It would, we would start thinking more like what would the human being do or what, how the human being is being affected by what we're doing and they would start thinking well how would the, this is the of course the human being would would think you're trying to take something from them because we're 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 speaking like they're doing this maliciously the whole world would change <laughs> we just need to we need to put the human being there we need to put the person there Anyways, so that's what I got from this great documentary. And I, my parting advice is use the Internet to learn. Use the Internet to learn. It's unbelievable. It's right there. It's right there. And you are the, the master of 
of your analysis. You can look at something and every single time you can say, yeah, that's all great. That's all great. But, you know, you don't have to subscribe. You don't have to become what a book says or what, you know, wh whoever professes or whatever political party says you, you should believe. You can... Uh, Everybody created everything we learn. So every everything that is taught also is fallible. But that's all we got to learn. We have education and learning and listening, communicating to build the, the existence of civilization, of mankind civilization, humankind civilization. And so you have to realize that everything that you watch and learn or read or hear will have an unestimable, a fluctuating amount of varying quality and then some void, some blank spaces where they totally left something out and they, they're completely wrong or they stopped there and they didn't go forward or what have you. But And only you have the authority to decide what is useful, what you value, what you understand. And, and you know, it would behoove us all to say, up to that point, I understand. I don't understand anymore from the this point on. If everybody who fights and argues in any kind of fight could say, could che always be uh, in, in check with the other person that they're following what they're saying and was able to say, okay, that I, I don't have anything I can relate to. I don't understand anymore what you're saying. No, we nobody would fight <laughs> because fight is fighting is not about being right. Fighting is about understanding, and so we, what we need to do is just like mankind needs to understand. We are perpetually destined to fail because this intelligence is too much for us. We don't. Our nature cannot think that big. We will, you know, well, make a whole bunch of candy and. You know, roller coasters and lots of money and, and just more food than we need and, you know, kill all these animals to make a garment. You know, we, we just it's just so beyond our hands. And to embrace that and say this is, you know, humbly say this, we are in a state of perpetual tendency to fail, to be blind, to get it wrong. And that be the starting point of everything or the starting base, right? The, the sort of the premise that we humbly stay on, and we will go a lot slower, and that will be a good thing because we will be just twice as much aware of the uh, of the quality matching what our hum our na our nature, what is best and most nurturing to our nature. And in arguing and fighting with people, it's the same thing. You know, you, you, if you want to actually resolve something with somebody else, or maybe you're just using Facebook to insult people or to, uh, you know, to ha be heard, to have the to people so, so you can say, look at me, I'm happy. Okay, believe me, because I want to believe I'm happy. So see how happy I am. You know, if we're not using Facebook for other psychological needs and we truly utilize it as an instrument to communicate, build things collectively and educate ourselves, which is, a, to me, an art, education, which is the same thing, um, is the greatest use I think it has. Um, you can, all you got to do is just say, it's just, maybe it's a little tiring, you know, because it's, it's more effortless venting, isn't it? It's more effortless just kind of like, eh, I don't care, blah, blah, blah. If you have to really pay attention to somebody else and then say, wait, okay, that I, that I, I, I can understand where you're coming from and, um, I see it too. I would, I would, I would see it differently or I would explain it differently. And then something else the person says, you go, wow, that's so well put. And then all of a sudden they say something and you realize that that person is saying something from knowledge and experience they have, which you don't have the tools or the experience to, match either a better interpretation or an appreciation that you really get or how much better they're saying it than you, but you just can't touch it. At that point, we should all be able to say, wait, I don't, I, I'm not able to understand any more of that. It's an element of conversation that, um, that we don't have. Uh, it's possibly because it's difficult. It's toiling 
It's difficult for the mind to do that. It means you have to really pay attention and care to not judge and not condemn and not put down the other person, which would allow you to always say, which would allow you to always say, um, wow, you said that so much better than how I understood it. Or maybe, hey, I know what you're talking about. I can, I, I actually, it's more complicated. It's more complex and it's a little different to what you're saying. And it doesn't mean you need to stop the person and say, stop, let me correct you because I want to speak now. But what I'm saying is that there's always an area, a shared area that we kind of know where the other person is traveling with what they're saying and fluctuating better capacities on one side or the other. But we come to an area where you see that the person has experience or knowledge in something that you don't. And if we were all, if we were all able to at that point say, okay, wait, can we pause now? Because now you're, I see that we need to talk about something which I would just have to listen and learn because uh, I don't, I don't have any reference or memory that will allow me and us to continue this conversation. Uh, wouldn't it be? <laughs> it seems almost like a, a boring, <laughs> nerdy world. <laughs> Nobody would fight. Nobody would fight. We would just always be able to talk and exchange, communicate, educate until the conversation was no longer shared. <laughs> Anyways, I always thought that was a funny concept. So... Ciao, and I hope you enjoyed this.